So we're going to talk about some uh, list format and stuff. I'm Chris. Let's do it. Bam. All right. We'll head over to our classic Warrior Horses site. And, uh, you know, the Warrior Horses are locked in battle all day long, uh, constantly planning strategies and so on. But they're also concerned about the inner lives of their horses. And their, you know, so they've got a collection of diaries here that they put together. Uh, the horses store in SharePoint because that's where you want to put your diaries. That makes total sense. But we're going to use this uh, as an example to look at a couple of things that maybe are easier in other quote unquote languages, but sometimes can be a bit challenging here in list format. I'm going to give you a couple of tips on how to do that, and we're going to go as quick as we can. All right. So the idea here, I've got this beautiful document library, right? And I've got uh, I've created a custom tiles view. You know, it's very beautiful. It shows the thumbnail and. One of the things I'm trying to show is the file size, right? So how do we get that and how do we look at that in different ways? So there's several things involved there. And the first thing we want to look at is how we deal with precision in numbers. So to do that, we're just going to take a look at this random sum number column here, which you can see just has the numbers in it. And we're going to go to column settings, we're going to format this column. And all we're going to do here is we're just going to go to advanced mode so we can uh, see what's going on here, and we're just going to make this, let's say, a div. Make it a little div here, Oops. and we're going to say our text content. All right, let's just show the current field. So at current field, and that's how we just get that value, that number. If we preview, wow, it looks exactly the same, right? Well, what if we wanted to do some math on that? All right, so now we're doing an expression. We say equals, and we're going to just divide it by three. And in this case, we start to see. Ugh, all right, we got some pretty ugly numbers. Now, the ones that divide fine, that looks great. You know, and we've got one that is one, you know, one decimal spot and some that are a lot. Uh, also, I am in the United States, so we use the uh, period for the decimal. And what I'm going to show you capitalizes on that, but you can certainly swap out what I'm doing with a comma if you are, you know, almost anywhere else in the world. Okay, so we take a look at what can we do here? How can we start working with something like this? So the first thing we need to do is, is find a way to do precision. Now, there's no you know, two string here where we specify, you know, the number of decimal digits we want or anything like that. Not when we're doing math. So first thing we want to do is find out, do we need to do anything? So we can inspect this to see if there's a period in there, right? So in order to do that, we're just going to put an if. We're going to say if that current field you know, has a period. So to do that, we're going to use this index of operator, index operator. Now it needs a string. So that's a number of values. So we're going to use a two string operator on that. So now we're going to wrap this. So we're going to convert this string just means text, right? So I'm going to put two string on there. I'm going to say, look inside there and tell me, is there a period? Now we know it won't have a period if it equals negative one, because it's going to give us the position of the period. So we're going to say, if it equals negative one, all right, well then just put out our value. So we're going to say current field divided by three. Now we have to do the math again because there are no local variables here, which is you know sad sometimes. It makes our expressions a lot more complicated. But it does work. In other words, we're just going to put a question mark, right? So if we preview that, hey, now we're detecting when we need to do something, right? So when there's a period, we're going to do something different. Otherwise, we're just going to show it. Now, in this one, our goal is to have it with two precisions, right? So to the hundredths, right? So we want, you know, dot zero zero or dot, you know, whatever afterwards. Now, that's pretty easy in this case, right? Because we know it doesn't have any. We can just say plus, put a little string, you know, blah, zero, zero, right? And hey, look at this. Hey, there we go. We fixed that one number. So as long as all of your numbers evenly divide, you're all good to go with this. But if you live in the real world, we got to do a little more. All right. So what can we do with that secondary part? What we've got is a question mark right now. Well, now we can start to use things because we've already looked at as a string. We can do some of our string operators. All right. So again, that just means text. In this case, we're going to use a substring. And so we're going to grab a substring of that value. So again, we have to convert it to a string to look inside it or to get the value, right? So we're going to say at current field divided by three, two string. And we want to say inside that text, we want to start, you know, at the beginning, so zero, and we want to go, you know, to some value. In this case, we want to go just past that period. So we're going to say index of, actually, I take our whole index of from before, because this is telling us where that period is. Grab that guy, and we're going to put that right in here instead. Ooh that in there and then we're going to say uh, plus three of course because we want to have the period and two digits after it so if we preview that there we go now we've got two you know digits of precision and that's great but what about this guy 
right? This 12.5 is messing our stuff up, right? Now, there are a couple of cool operators. There's a pad end and a pad start, you know, which could help us with that. And you might think, uh, I'm just going to slap this on here. Right? I'm going to do a pad end. And the idea of a pad end is you give it a string, which is this one. And we're going to say we want a total number of digits. We'll say 10 and we want to throw a zero on the end. All right, there we go. We'll preview that. Ah, we have a disaster. And that is we don't actually know how many digits there are before the period. And although we have a length operator, that length operator is for arrays and doesn't really work on text. So what can we do here? Are we out of luck? No, or I wouldn't have shown it, right? We're going to move our pad end. So let's get rid of the pad end. And what we can do is we can take advantage of the fact that substring does not care um, if you go outside the, the what do you call it, the bounds, right, of the string. So in other words, even if our string is two characters long and we specify we want zero to 100, it doesn't care. So what we can do is right here with our two string, we can actually pad it here. So we can pad the end here, right there, and we could say, in this case, we'll go just like 100, we don't care, 100, and then throw 100 zeros on the end of that string, no matter what, we're still using the index of on the original calculation. And we do that, bam, we have our two digit precision. So that is a lot of little operators and nested if statements to make that work, but we've got it. So that's very, very exciting. So now how do we use that for, say, our file size? All right, so let's save that just so we've got it. So our file size on the document library is in the additional columns. We have this file size column, we can apply that. And now we see that in this case, it actually is showing the value, right? Bytes, megabytes, kilobytes, it'll go up to gigabytes, right? Um, and then for folders, it actually shows the number of items in there. So that's interesting. So can we access that value ourselves? Well, let's just use the same sum number column again. We're just gonna look directly at that file size. In this case, we're just gonna say, file size and we access this with a wonderful name of file underscore x 0020 underscore size very catchy all right so we got that Woo! what the heck is that right so now we got some weird value what that is is the number of bytes right so it's not giving us this fancy value if we try to put a display value like we can with other things it's still going to be the same thing all right and it's not showing anything for folders we don't get this fancy one item or or so on. So what can we do with this? How can we work with this value? Well, good news, we're gonna do a lot of what we just did, but we're gonna add a bunch of uh, operators and some other things there to kind of calculate those out. And so the way we do that uh, is first we wanna check, you know, is there anything there? So we're gonna say equals, and we're gonna say if file size, right? And we're gonna say if it's nothing, well then just output, you know, nothing, right? We don't care, otherwise then put it out, right? And so then we'll put out that file size again. So I'll underscore X, 0020 underscore size, right? So that's gonna kind of accomplish the same thing, but the reason we're doing this is to protect our operations here a little bit. But what if we wanted that kind of item count right there, like they've got? So the good news is that's a different column. So if we go to that show hide columns, there is an item child count column. So we can apply that and we can see the values there. We can use those too. So we can come in here and say, instead of this, we can say, you know, let's show the item child count, right? It doesn't have any uh, extra things in it. So there we go. So now we say, if there's no size, we'll show that, right? We can get a little bit fancy and we could say, you know, uh, I'm just gonna cut and paste this one for time, right? But if I've got uh, an item child count and I could say, inspect that to uh, give myself some fancy stuff. So say that plus, if it's greater than one items, otherwise just say item. I'll give it an extra parenthesis there. Let's see. Yeah. So now we got one item. That's pretty cool. But we still aren't really working with our file size the way we want to. So the first thing we might do with our file size, um, you know, is take a look at it, right? So we want to know, hey, if this file size, you know, if that file size is greater than, say, 1,024, you know, or it's less than 1,024, then we want to show it in bytes, which it already is in, right? So we're going to say then just show the file size file underscore x your underscore size you know and we're going to say plus bytes very exciting otherwise we're going to say question mark just so we can see what it is All right if we preview that something kind of weird that happened right i mean it worked but then we've got these and that's interesting now one of the things to note is that file size is actually coming back as a number 
I mean, not as a number, it's coming back as a string, which is very strange. So a lot of times we have to convert it to a number when we want to do any kind of math on it. So let's jump ahead a little bit, All right? So that works just fine if we're doing, uh, say, the bytes, right? But if we wanted to do, say, kilobytes now, well, then that gets a little more complicated. So let's check the next one. So now we're going to say if, and we're just going to put it in a number so we can operate on it, operate. But you know what? Let's, uh, let's not have me read that out repeatedly. All right, copy that paste that in if this thing right is less than and we're going to use the pow function right so this is going to raise it to the power of two right so we're going to raise it to the power of two we're saying if it's less than that right then we want to put it out in kilobytes so this is going to be kb otherwise we're going to say question mark again right and we're going to put our extra things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start inspecting that. Now, this gets a little crazy, so I'm just going to copy and paste this huge formula because we're going to use everything we just used in that sum number column earlier, except we're doing all these raised to the power of and all this other fun stuff. So let's just copy and paste that and we'll kind of go through it. Ooh, that looks real pretty. All right, but well, if we preview that, oh, that's fancy. So it's got it out to precision. It's got the kilobytes, it's got the megabytes and the bytes. And if we had something large enough at the diary, they really keep writing, we'll have it in gigabytes too. Right, and then if we want to throw back in our item count, we can do all that too. So that's interesting, right? And if you take a look at this, this is a sample available to you, and you can check it out afterwards uh, to really kind of dive into this fun thing. But what's really happening is the nested if statements. And what we're doing is we're converting that string value that comes back to a number. We're comparing it first to see if it fits within bytes, and then using it there. If it doesn't, we move on to kilobytes and so on. And we raise it to the power to see if it falls into those categories. And then we do the math to divide those out. And then we're doing that same kind of substring and two string with the index of to get all of our precision on there as well. So that we don't end up with crazy numbers. So then we can just take this very exciting formula we just did. And I'm just gonna move over to our tiles view. Ooh, let's go to tiles where we've got that size placeholder and I'm gonna format that view. And all I'm gonna do is go down here where that is. And I'm going to say instead of size, let's copy that same form that we just did and we'll preview it. And there it is. So, woo! Now you can work with file size and item child count and so on. And all that works pretty nicely. Also, one thing to note here is that uh, this thumbnail, if you ever haven't seen this, you just say at thumbnail large. Wow, that couldn't be easier, right? And that'll just be the source for the image for the files. So, check that out. All right. So, very, very quickly, we'll do a quick wrap up. And that's that there are a series of operators you can use for precision, right? If you want to just skip all of this kind of string and text manipulation here, you can just round them up or round them down, right? With the ceiling and the floor and just cut them off and don't care about those anymore. And then if you're working with the file size, remember that it is in bytes and the value is text. Um, and it's going to be empty for things like folders, but also things that might surprise you, things like a OneNote file, for instance, oftentimes doesn't have file size. Um, and so on. So you're going to want to check for those conditions before you start doing operations on it to avoid failures. And then, of course, item child count is available to you as well. And both of these don't necessarily have to be in the view because it's a document library. They're going to come back and you can just use them. So there you go. Here's some resources. Check out the documentation. We got over 100 plus samples on all sorts of things from this to views to forms to columns to every column type and so on. And of course, we have all of these videos we do every couple of weeks, and you can check all those out on the playlist available on our YouTube channel here. And that's it for me. Cool. Thank you, Chris.